getting started the Google Classroom. Alright, so this recording is going to go over a few things for the training. This is middle school and fourth grade. So a lot of you have already used Google Classroom before, so I'm just going to be doing a brief overview on it, um, how to get started. If you need more information, I suggest you watch this YouTube video. YouTube is the best way to learn, by the way. Um, I know that Everyone has different ways of learning, but what I would love for you to do is watch this YouTube video and then play with Classroom a little bit. And if you have any questions, let me know and I will gladly come up to your room and be one on one and answer all of your questions. Um, I just don't want to waste everyone's time because some people are on, are on a different skill level, level than others. All right, so getting started with Google Classroom. That's going to be the first thing I go over. I want to touch on forms. Um, OBS, that's how I'm currently recording my screen. Um, hardware, the, any, anything you guys will need this year, laptop, mic, digital camera, depending on what you want to do for your students. And I know that every teacher, grade level, everyone's different. So if you let me know what you need, I can get it for you. Um, if you need help with Google extensions, Kelly Congrove is holding a meeting on Friday at 8 a.m. in the cafeteria. She's really good with that stuff. Um, to answer the question here about Class Dojo, yes, anything. If there's anything I can give you to put on Class Dojo to make it easier for the parent to be able to communicate with you and to get on and to be able to get on Google Meet meetings with you, um, anything like that, just let me know. Um, I could always write up a tutorial or even do something like this. Um, syncing Google Classroom with Gradebook. A couple of people have tried that, but apparently if there's just any mistake in the name, it could cause Classroom not to be able to sync with Gradebook and there, there'll be errors. So I'm going to look into that um, because it would benefit you guys if grades could just transfer over instead of you having to look in classroom and then back to gradebook and then back and forth. Um, so that is one thing I want to look up for you guys. But I want to start off with classroom and here are my classes. I just created this classroom. So if you don't know how to create a class, this plus button. Oh, and by the way, if you just go to classroom.google.com you'll be taken here. And then if you want to actually add it to your desktop as a shortcut, if you just grab a hold of this lock icon and drag it to your screen, I, I already did it, it's right here, so I'm just gonna select don't copy. But yours will come up on your desktop. So then anytime you want to get to classroom, you can just double click it and it'll take you there. So this is the class that I created. Hold on, let me get rid of this one. And this one, and this. Okay, so this is the classroom. Here's the class code. The code is how you'll get students to join your classroom. So whether you want a few students to join the classroom, whether they're just the remote learners in your class, or if you want the whole classroom to be a part of it, then give them that code. And then they'll do the same thing. They'll go to classroom.google.com, um, and after they sign it, after either you or the student, whoever signs into your Gmail, if these nine dots right here, almost looks like a uh, like a waffle, you can go to click on your Gmail and then click on the waffle and they'll see classroom and then join class and then they'll put in the class code that you gave them. Okay. All right, so we're back to the classroom. All right, so we're in our classroom. We just talked about the class code. You can select a theme. This isn't very important to like your classroom, but you can customize it to make it to your liking. So I'm just gonna select this one, since obviously I like technology, unless it's not working. Um, you can either you can even upload a photo if you'd like. Um, so this is this this is just the dashboard. 
So any announcements that you want your class to know about, post them here, and it's the first thing that they'll see. Um, classwork, obviously the classwork tab. Um, you can create Google Meet meetings from here, access your Google Calendar, um, access the drive folder for this class that was created when you created this class. So anything that, any assignments that you assign or pretty much any documents that you upload to your classroom are going to be in this class drive folder. And I'll show you that after I create one. So your people, when you're, as your students are invited and they join, they will be populated into here. You also can invite other teachers. So let's just say if you wanted to collaborate with another teacher and either that teacher would be helping you in classroom or you guys would be, you guys would have a classroom together and then however you'd want to do that. I'm not sure how you would do that with students. Um, if you had a lot of students and two teachers taught the same thing. But, um, but this is just a way to collaborate with other teachers. You have the grades tab. So there's no students right now and there are no grades. So the classwork, you can start by creating a topic, which is what I would do first, just to try to organize this tab. So I'm just going to make this topic resources and I'm going to click add and it's empty. And then I'm going to create another topic and I am going to make it Let's just say weekly assignments. So let's just say if you have a common weekly assignment that you assign weekly, um, they could all be put in that topic. So that way it's just, it's just easier to organize instead of having everything jumbled together out here. Um, let's see here. I'm just going to add another topic because the quizzes is where the forms are going to come into play. So I'm going to go ahead and create that. Um, resources. If I click on that and let's see here. Okay. Create assignment. Or actually for resources, create material. And let's just say if I had a syllabus that I wanted to upload or anything that you'd want the class to um, have the option to go back and look at, having a uh, resources folder is useful for that. So I don't have a syllabus, but you can make the title syllabus obviously. And then if you had information, you just, you can either create it at this time or you can click add and you can get anything from your drive, upload something from your computer using this button. You'll have the option to browse. You can click upload. Let's see. Um, let's just find something on drive. I'll just find something. So I'm actually going to upload this MS training document that we were looking at earlier, this, just so people can go back and look at it if they want to. Okay, so topic, resources, it's for this class, and this is where if you have more than one class and you want them to share the same resources, you can select or uncheck a class. This one's grayed out because I'm in that class so I have to add it to that one. Um, and then you can either, you can even select like which students you want to, you want to see this. So if I just hit click post and then, so under the resources, I have my syllabus and then weekly assignments. Let's just say if I want to create an assignment, I'd hit create assignment and you can, 
be very, uh, this is very customizable. You can almost put anything on here. Think of this as just like what I, I use Blackboard in school. This is just Blackboard for K through 12 in my opinion. Um, it's very user friendly for the students. And the only obstacles that I have found with Classroom is just that the integration between a teacher taking grades and syncing them with whatever um, SIS they're using. For instance, we're using progress books, so we, we use gradebook. There are some um, there are some issues with doing that with uh, progress book right now, which is what I was mentioning earlier. But I'm going to look into that and hopefully have that fixed within the next couple weeks. So that way, grades can just transition in from your Google Classroom to Gradebook. All right, so let's just, I'm going to create an assignment. And I'm going to create an assignment that says, you know, please tell me about your long summer. I'm sure everyone would have a lot to say. So that's the title. And then if you want to put any instructions down here, you can. So I'm going to put it under weekly assignments. And I can even select a due date. So let's just say if I'm planning for this week, the 24th, week of the 24th, and I want it due on Monday, then I'll select Monday, and the time can be optional. Um, I guess if you're more of like a period type class, and your class started at 9 a.m., then you can always put that in there just to make sure the student has it done by then. And hit assign. And here it is. So when the student clicks on this, they'll be able to, what most likely is gonna happen is you can either create a Google Doc and you can have information in it and then the student can populate that can make a copy of that same doc with your information on it and fulfill this, the assignment that way or excuse me they can create a Google Doc themselves or whatever they're used to using let's just say if a student has a uh, Windows laptop at home and they don't want to use Google Docs and that's totally fine. They can use Microsoft Word if they want to because they'll still be able to upload it here and you have Microsoft Office on your laptop so you'll still be able to open it. Um, now the only things that can be automatically graded are Google Forms. Anything else you would have to go in there and actually grade. So if you want to, a lot of people use Google Forms for quizzes. So let's go to Actually, I'm already in Classroom. If I want to go to Google Forms, I can click this Google Ask button right here, the waffle, how I like to explain it. Scroll down, and I can click on Forms. And Forms has come a long way. And there are teachers here that know more about Forms than I do. Um, but if you want to make a quiz, this is, I'm just want to go over the basics. So blank quiz, and then whatever you want it to be. So I'm just going to pretend that I teach math, which I would be terrible at. Let's, let's just go for algebra. Algebra 1. And I don't even know any algebra questions, but okay, let's just put 2 plus 2. You can keep adding options until you're finished. It's multiple choice. It ha it's required. So that's question number one. This is the right answer. If I hit answer key, you check the answer. Hit done. Um, the points. This is where you also want to do the points. So this is worth two points. Done. So right now, this is just a quiz with one question. It's worth two points. So if you get it right, you're getting 100. If not, you're getting a zero. 
So after you has, have this form complete, let's just click on this. Sometimes that will auto-populate with the uh, title of your form right here. But since it did it, I'll just go ahead and type it in. All right, so we're back. Um, I just went ahead, I actually changed the uh, title of this form to make it more appropriate for my questions, addition and subtraction, and I changed this from algebra to basic math. So after that, I did add two questions, just another question, five minus two, um, and then right here. But I just wanted to put, you, there's so many different options for the types of questions you can ask. You have all these options. Now, for multiple choice and then short answer, those are probably the only options that you're going to be able to put an automatic grade for. If it's going to be um, a paragraph answer, then you're going to have to go in there and check that yourself. But after I'm done with the form, it saves automatically. So if I just go back to classroom and I'm in weekly quizzes, quiz assignment, it actually, okay, let's, uh, I don't need that, but I do want to add this. Okay, so I have this basic math quiz that I just created. It's worth 100 points. Due date. I'll just set this one for Tuesday. 9 a.m. Topic. Weekly quizzes. Assign. Okay, now I have a quiz under my weekly quizzes, I have an assignment under my weekly assignments, and I have a syllabus under my resources. So I'm going to stop there with Classroom and just go over Google Meet really quick. And as you can see in Stream, everything that I've done, the student will be able to see. There's an upcoming section over here, due Monday, um, and then the quiz. All right, we're back, and now we're going to go over uh, Google Meet. So first, I'm going to click on my calendar. I already have it up. And I'm going to schedule a Google Meet meeting with my remote learners. I'm going to add Google Meet video conferencing. Join with Google Meet. <clears throat> That's here. I'm going to hit save. Click on this. Copy the link for the meet. Copy to clipboard. I'm going to go back to class. I'm going to hit create. And I'm going to make this an assignment. I'm going to put some directions. I, named, I titled it Remote Learners Meeting. I'm going to take that link I copied. I'm going to paste it here. I'm going to put it under Weekly Assignments, so it's there. It's worth, this is going to be just worth 10 points. If you got on, participated, great. Hit Sign. Now you can see it here. When the student clicks on this, they'll be able to get to the meeting. and they'll be able to join. So right now I joined the meeting. Um, what you could do is the same thing. Just go into your classroom, click on this. You can join and then once you join, if you want to present your screen or just if you're talking to someone on the phone, this is perfectly fine like this. Or if you want to present your screen, you can click present now. 
and I'm just going to do my entire screen, and I'm going to do the same screen. It's going to look weird. So right now I'm actually sharing this screen, and I'm presenting to everyone. Um, also, another thing you can do in here is remove this. I can record this meeting for anyone who missed it. So I can hit record meeting, ask for consent. I'm just going to hit accept. So right now, the recording says it'll start soon. So I'm going to wait. All right. Now I'm going to go back to my classroom. And just to move around a little bit, I'm going to go back to the meeting. I'm going to hit stop recording. Stop recording the meeting. The meeting will be saved in your Google Drive. And I am going to hang up. So let's just say if I wanted to go back to this assignment and post or share the video that was recorded on my screen or put it in a different underneath of a different topic. Um, whatever you want to do with that. It's almost my advice to you is if you already have a way of using Classroom, just go ahead and keep doing it the way you're doing it. Obviously, you found a way to do it the way you like to. So why change that? Um, if you're new to it, you can do whatever you want with it. Basically, it's just a centralized location to communicate with your students, to assign work. Um, that's all it is. Even if you don't have any work assigned, work to assign, um, let's just say if your job is just to have weekly meetings with students who are on IEPs or something like that. You could come in here and create a classroom, add that student to the class. That way, possibly, even like the kid's parent can use the classroom with you. And then you can set up these meetings and you could use, you can um, create meetings with different parents. Um, you could use it for that. It's really just a centralized place for you to be able to do your work for your class um, online. Okay, so I'm going to go back to my drive. I just want to add a new tab. It should be in here by now. Sometimes it does take a while to generate the video. My drive, I'm going to go down to meet recordings. And it doesn't look like it's in here yet, but once it is in here, I'll just use I could just use this video for an example. Okay. Share. And I'm just gonna do let's see, only people that can open with this link. I don't I don't wanna do that. Okay, anyone in this group can see it, so why not? Just make it for the district. Copy the link, hit done, go back to your classroom. I actually want to create a new module or a topic. I'm just going to do remote meetings, weekly remote meetings. Hit add. create material week one remote meeting I copied that link so I'm going to paste it here change it to weekly remote meetings this is week one hit post okay so whoever needs access to that video now has it. Let's see, we went over classroom forms a little bit. Um, I want to talk about OBS. It's the program that I'm using to record my screen. So 
I have the link here. And if you want to use this, I can install it for you and set it up, no problem. But after we download it, it's really simple. I'm just going to show you my screen because I'm using it right now. Let me go back to this. Whoops. Okay, here it is. So this is what OBS looks like. It might not look user friendly at first, but it's super easy to use. Um, all of the uh, offices or the district office uses it to record meetings all the time, and um, they never have trouble with it. And if you need more help with it, I can help you. Um, but as you can see here, which you'll have a mic, the display is your window. After it's open, there's just this plus sign you hit add, audio input capture. What you'll do is create new and hit OK. And then right now I'm using this, this gaming headset to talk. So I would select it. Okay, get this out of here. I don't want two of them. Okay, so this is the audio input capture. This is what I'm using right now. Display capture 2. This is the, see the red around the monitor? Or the screen, that's what I'm using now. Display capture. I have two displays, so I could select this one if I wanted to. And then when you're ready to record the screen, you can just minimize, you can just hit start record. I'm not going to stop the record right now just because I'm just, I'm doing it. You hit start record or start recording, hit minimize, and then do whatever you need to do. And then after you're done, you're on Windows 10, so it'll look exactly like mine. If I hit the folder down here, it looks, your computer will look just like this. I mean, there'll be different stuff over here, but if you go to videos, they'll all be in here. So you would just rename them um, as you would go. So I've, in this video series, I'm currently on my fourth video, and these are my, the ones I did. All right. So that takes care of OBS and what that is. And you might not want to use OBS. Um, I know there's another, there's a few options out there. You could use Google Meet to actually record your screen, but the only way you can use the recording feature is if you actually have it as a meeting. You just can't open it up and hit record screen. So that's the only reason why I don't like using Google Meet for that. Um, this is a very lightweight program. And like I said, you hit start recording. You minimize it, it records your screen, you can use your mic to talk into it, um, whatever you need to do. And the same thing for, let's just say if you want to record your smart board, and you're at your smart board working, you can have the mic plugged into the speaker on the, by the smart board, and then you can manipulate the smart board, and at the same time, your computer screen's the same as the smart board, so it'll capture that as well. Um, you would just have to go back to your computer and hit stop recording. But... Okay, so that's it with OBS, and the next thing we are going to talk about are any hardware needs that you guys have. Um, I think that I did mention that earlier, just let me know. Extensions with Kelly on Friday from 8 a.m. to 11.30. Um, whatever you guys need to uh, help the parents better understand how to do the remote learning, um, let me know and I'll uh, work on that. Uh, syncing Classroom with Gradebook, I'm going to look into that. Um, other than that, I think that pretty much covers everything. I didn't dive super deep into classroom, but this is definitely going to get you started. And um, next week, if you want, just I can schedule meetings with whoever wants more um, information on it, and we can do it that way and go from there. So this is asking me to set up grading.
this is actually really nice. Guardian summaries. So in this YouTube video that I posted, right here, it talks about everything you need to know in regards to this screen right here. And Guardian is just the parent of the student who is in your class. Guardians are only meant to see um, any assignments due. They can communicate with you on there. You can mute students so that way they don't, because you students can message back and forth in classroom. You can mute them so that way they're not talking back and forth. And all of that is in this YouTube video right here. I highly suggest you to watch that after this training. Um, Google Forms, here's a great video for it. Um, other than that, I think that pretty much covers it for middle school. If you have any questions, just let me know, and um, hopefully this is a good year for everyone, and we can keep the kids in school, and see 2021. Thanks.